So welcome aboard. Now into the presentation. My first slide is about great things are not done by impulse but by a series of small things brought together. As I said, I love quotes because there are people far smarter than I that have been around and thought of these things and they're wonderful learning tools. So what that's about is all of us together going to the future. These aren't done by impulse. These things are done because we actually we think about them, we know what we want to do. And it's one step at a time and it's about coming together. So I want to reinforce to all of you that this is about us working together here collectively and out there with our teams when we go out there and then beyond your teams, out of those silos across the different areas and enabling ourselves to communicate in a productive and positive way. And it can be business focused, but I don't mind people having a bit of a talk about their cat and their dog and their family either. Because at the end of the day, we are people and we need to cherish that. And by building that up, we'll actually go forward a lot better than if we try and act like automated robots and not think about those other aspects of our lives. But it's a series of small things brought together. And you were brought together today. Each of you might think, well, I'm just one part of this big machine, what can I do? But every one of you is quite significant. And by coming together, we have significant ability and capability. So the presentation over the next half an hour really is about our sustainable future. We do wonderful things. But as I said, TAFE has changed. We're in a competitive environment now. The, the policy changes within state and the federal governments hasn't helped us in terms of our sustainability. We're now in an environment where we have to earn the money we have to fight for the money, we have to win the money. Don't like it, but that's the reality. So if we don't think like a business, we're not going to be here. The bottom line is we're committed to our communities and our industries here, I know that. So we have to think about sustainability. We want to be here in 50 years' time. Institute Snapshot. We cover 110,000 kilometres squares. That's big. That's why distance learning is so important. We've got a lot of small communities that we can't get out to easily but we can actually get them into us through virtual learning environments, through connected classrooms, also face-to-face. -face. This isn't just about doing everything online. Blended delivery does have face-to-face -face components because part of the learning experience is, is socialisation and being able to share ideas, but we can make it a lot easier. So that is a challenge for us, but it's a strength compared to other competitive RTOs because we have wonderful coverage. We cover a lot of areas and we have coverage in terms of the depth of our programs. We can provide a statement of attainment right through to a diploma, and they're things that we can do that no one else can do. We have 11 campuses of varying sizes, and those campuses have a significant role in terms of delivery, but also connectivity with the regions and industry and communities around them. We provide about 507 courses, so again, that's our strength. We provide a lot of courses, which means we can satisfy a lot of different people's needs. We have 1,000 staff and about 20,000 students, so that's fantastic. You should feel good about that. You should feel good about being part of that because it's a marvellous thing to know. We're not only changing 20,000 people's lives, but if you get into the multiplier effect, which I do because I lecture in economics, we'd actually impact on about 50,000 people's lives. So I hear people mystified about our vision. But in fact, the executive spent a whole day, and I was part of this process, developing our vision as a guideline to what we think our organisation is about. So the first part of it is internal. New England Institute's vision is to be a strong, capable, vibrant business. Now, strong, capable and vibrant, that's what I would ask each of you to think about what does that mean to you and how can you actually display those things. We want every staff member to be strong in terms of their belief of what they do, strong in terms of their passion for what they do. We need them to be capable. That's my role with workforce development, to provide you with the training that you need to enable you to do your job. Because there's no point asking people to go out and do the job if they don't have the tools. And the most important tool is between your ears in terms of your capability and knowledge. You certainly need infrastructure, you need technology, you need computers. And we're in a changing world where it's really hard to keep up with currency. Things changing all the time in your different specialised areas and you need to be able to keep up with that. So keeping the knowledge of your industry is really important. And we also want our people to be vibrant. The opposite of that, don't know if you've ever met anybody, but you go to a barbecue and someone says, oh yeah, I work at TAFE, what a shithole. I can't wait to get out of there. I've hated the place, I always have. Well, that's not being very bright, vibrant. And it's not setting a good... My question to that person is, what's going wrong? Come and talk to me, so, come and talk to me or to one of the line managers. Let's try and figure out how we can make that so we can turn that around. Because they may have very good reasons why they're upset but putting it out there is not going to fix it. Coming back and reporting it back, giving us a chance to fix it, 
means that we can improve that person's work life because I'd hate to think that someone drags their feet to work every day going, I hate this, what am I doing here? I don't want to see that. I really want to see a positive workplace where people come on board and they feel excited like I do. That's a change in culture. We have to support each other to get through that. But that's what we mean by vibrant. And whether we like it or not, we are a business. And if we don't actually function like a business, we're not going to be in business very, very long. That's the bottom line, whether we like it or not. This tail end of the vision is about what we're here to do. What we do with our communities and regions, we're here to help them into pathways that enable them to go into employment where they feel even more empowered. That's what it's about. We're also here to support business productivity, so we're here to help businesses be profitable because if businesses are profitable, they employ people. They employ people that supports communities, which is ultimately our aim. We're here to support and drive regional prosperity. We need to be leaders in that. So what that vision says is we can be working really hard, but if we're not enabling employment pathways, if we're not enabling business productivity, if we're not enabling regional prosperity, then what the bloody hell are we doing? That's a challenge for each of us in our jobs because quite often in our jobs, we do things because we've been told to and we do things because historically that's the way it's always been done. But if you sit back and have a look and question it or get asked, why do you do that? You go, I don't know. And you'll find it's probably because the position's moved on in terms of demand, but we're doing some things historically that we don't need to do and they don't actually contribute to this. In terms of the organisation, that means there's things we possibly need to let go so we can pick up new things. It's not, it's not getting rid of resources, it's not getting rid of staff, it's changing what we do so everything you do contributes to this rather than wasting energy and time. So it's using our money better. So the challenge, achieving the vision within the reality of the parameters that exist. In some of our smaller communities, the campuses and the communities are saying, we want more courses. And I say, I'm happy to provide the courses, you show me the demand. Because quite often there's a difference. Because there's not the demand, we don't provide the course. I can guarantee you, if we've got the students, we'll provide the course. If we've got the students, we will provide the course. There's no doubt about that. When there's always a problem is if we don't have the numbers, that's where technology and blended delivery can help us because if we've got the students across the board, we can then provide the funds for the course because we have a limited amount of funds and we need to be able to assess where we get the best bounce for the buck. That's what it's all about. So we need to look at demand. We have got regional growth, but in some communities we've actually got regional atrophy. The communities are declining. The solution isn't about TAFE providing more courses. The solution to the future is about New England Institute working with the business councils, the regional communities, the city councils, the town councils, the rural councils, to develop futuristic plans that will enable those towns to start growing. Because when those towns start growing, we'll have more employers, we'll provide more courses because we'll have increased demand. There's no point flogging courses if there's nowhere for the students to go. And staff capability is one of the biggest challenges we've got, enabling staff to access the training they need to maintain currency in their skill areas and also more broadly in terms of entrepreneurial skills and all those other things. So as I've already said, business success, quite simple. You need to maximise the dollars in. You need to minimise your costs. And we do that through valued and empowered staff. And so I really am always after feedback on how we can enable our staff to feel more empowered and to feel more valued. And it can be any idea you can think of. I'm happy to get the feedback. Send me an email with ideas because despite that external environment, part of my role is to enable staff to feel good about themselves and where they work. Funding. I promised you to give you some of the data. There's a horrible thing called the purchasing agreement. It's a contract with the Deputy Director General who is the head of TAFE New South Wales. They put out a contract basically under what's called 25 RAM categories. That's 25 discipline areas. And what they say to me is, I'll purchase so many hours of delivery in, in hospitality and I'll give you $6.70 an hour. And that's it. And for the 25 categories, that's how they figure it out based on national trend figures, research and so forth. And then we give feedback about how wrong they are and we think the demand will be this many hours and then sometimes they listen, sometimes they don't. But then they total it all up. And last year I got 42 million bucks, which sounds a lot. And it is a lot, a lot of money, it's fantastic. 42 million bucks to do great things. But the committed expenditure at any given financial year in terms